a very good afternoon to all the doctors. I am Nishita from Clarnet. Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Department of Community. RMFC team always loves innovations and spreading knowledge. Everyone knows the importance of data science, as rightly pointed out by Sir. Data rules the world. As you all know, we have successfully conducted many basic and advanced data analysis workshops. Our key resource persons, respected Dr. Pragya Kumar Nam, who is multitasking as the registrar of AIMS Patna. Additional professor of the department, nodal in charge of RMFC, ICTC, LFA vaccination, and many such in charges, along with a very vibrant faculty of our department, Dr. Samshad Ahmed sir. Uh, both of them came with an idea of short series which would discuss a single topic in detail. We have already successfully conducted many workshops and webinars related to data analysis, and now I take immense pleasure in welcoming you all to this webinar about introduction to Jamovi software. Thank you, Pragya ma'am and Samshad sir for awesome revolutionary new ideas and for your contribution towards data world. Now, I request Dr. Pragya ma'am to take over the session. Over to you ma'am. Uh, thank you, Venkatesh, for the nice introduction. Although I asked you uh, to convey a brief introduction, but still you have, you know, uh, took a lot of effort and time to introduce me. Thank you so much. And so without uh, further delay, I will share my screen and start the uh, did, uh, this uh, just I'll just show you the glimpse of the Jamovi because it is not possible to show each and everything. So with that, uh, so we will see how to quickly navigate the Jamovi, uh, taking all the options and like we have learned in the SPSS, but how to do those things in Jamovi. So basically, Jamovi it was released on August 2018 and again updated in 2019 and Dr. C.M. Singh has given you a very wide overview and very uh, exhaustive overview of the software, how it is different from R and how it is different from SPSS and about its cost issue and it is freely available. So what we can do with Jamovi, we can do the basic data analysis. Then again, we can do the advanced data analysis, but it needs module installation because we'll see that there are various modules of Jamovi and we need to install those modules separately. Again, there is a very good option of meta-analysis in the Jamovi and we can do that also, but again, it needs a module installation. So when we run the analysis, we always need a result update. We always need a output again but most of the time we are changing our decision while we are doing the output so in jamovi there is no need to rerun the whole analysis and it's a very user friendly interface that's why it saves time in formatting the table because the output which comes in jamovi we, we will see that that it comes as a api style table very much near to api style table and you can directly copy and paste the table in your results section and start writing the interpretation so all the analysis of the jamovi in the background it's the command of r which is uh, running so there is no doubt about it that uh, you cannot use it you can definitely give the reference of jamovi that you did the analysis in the Jamovi. Many of you who are skeptical now whether you should be uh, telling, acknowledging and citing Jamovi or not, but yes, you can definitely cite this because many people are using this and it is equivalent to R because it's just the clicking the R option point and click interface of the R. But the only advantage is that you don't have to write the commands of R because many of us have tried R, but there is a difficulty in writing the command, especially because we are not mathematical people. We are medical people or maybe we are the researcher. So we don't have a very exhaustive background of the mathematics. That's why it is difficult for us to run the commands, write the commands, especially. So in this demo, we all the commands has been written. They are running in the background and it is just the point and click interface of the R, which is making our life so easy. So for whom this demo is recommended? So it is recommended for all researcher who are interested in doing research, be it a PG thesis research, be it a basic publication, advanced publication, any report writing, report documentation, so any type of analysis of the data which you want to do, Jamovi is definitely user-friendly for all of them, especially for the beginners. 
for the people who are very senior into data analysis, they may find it like they are already well versed in this data, maybe in SPSS, there is a SAS, and there are so many other softwares too. But beginners, because we always have this barrier of data analysis, whenever we learn this term data handling or data analysis, you know, we set off, get uncomfortable uh, using uh, that data analysis. So that's how for all those people, and we know that there is a scarcity of people who do this job for us. So we want you people to make empowered, to make independent, so that you should you should have a confidence in handling the data, in taking the output, in writing those interpretation, and then in making the report. So for all those researchers, this Jamovi is a breakthrough. So this, uh, this is very clear from the slide that till now, almost 7,710 analysis has been done and cited using Jamovi uh, since 2018. So first we'll see how to install this Jamovi. So this Jamovi, you have to go to the uh, Google and then this link is there. That's why I'll, I'll directly show you. Maybe you can go to your window and you, so it will lead to a download option. So there are two options of this Jamovi. It comes as a solid, which is 2.2.5, and then it comes as a current option. So this is recommended for most of the user, this solid version. So that's why we also recommend you people to download this. So first, if, if you click this, since I have installed it, so that's why it will uh, be reinstalled in my uh, PC, but there are separate version for the Mac and for the window. So those of you who are having a Mac version, you can install the Jamovi for Mac and for window. So the only take home message which we want to give you to install a solid version of Jamovi, not the current one. So let's know about the data set. So in this data set, first I'll give the brief introduction of the data set which we are using for the demonstration purpose. So the data which we have used here So it, it has been taken from a Worcester heart attack study. It was an ongoing population-based study by Robert J. Goldberg of the Department of Cardiology at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, US. And the main goal of this study is to describe the factors associated with the trends of her time in the incidence of survival rate following hospital admission for acute myocardial infarction at all metropolitan Worcester hospital. So the main data set was having more than 8,000 subjects, but we took a random sample of 193 subjects from the WHAS, and we have modified and added few variables to show you few more tests. So let's open the data set. So in this, first we'll show you how to import the, open the file and import. So I have this Jamovi installed. So you should open, type this Jamovi over your window. This will come, click this. This software will open and it needs an internet connectivity. So that connectivity should be good. Otherwise there is some problem in opening the this software. So now this icon is there, click on this icon and there is an option of open. So normally we save our data in Excel form. That's, that's a recommended. Otherwise, Jamovi can import or open any data type. It can open SPSS, it can open SAS. So whatever format you enter your data, it will import the data sheet. But generally, we recommend to use an Excel sheet for entering the data. So that's how we are using it as a demo purpose. So click on open. Then there is a button of this browse. Click on this browse and show the path. So I have this Excel sheet and I will this use this Excel sheet for showing the import option. So this data will be imported here. So you can see the data has been imported. Now the second option, because the data in the Excel is in the form of a code. Now you need to write the name of those code here in the Jamovi. 
so for that like age is a continuous variable but for gender what is one and two for that you double click this variable then this will come so here you can see here type of the variable in the drop down option you can see nominal ordinal continuous since gender is a nominal variable keep it as such and then it will be in the form of integer then it has got two coding one and two so you may write one is for male and two is for female so that's the code which i have kept depending on your coding you can give the name of the code similarly this socioeconomic if you double click this you can see the options one two three so you can write this one as a low socioeconomic status the two as a middle and then this three as a high socioeconomic status so similarly you can this button with this when you click on this button it will move the variables forward when you click this button it will show the backward movement of the variable and this again there is a one button here if you click this this window will be closed so similarly you can give the name of all the codes which are there because when it imports the data from excel to gemo v you need to write the name of the code that's how you do it so since i have already have a pre coded uh, data sheet so i will show my analysis on this pre coded so you can see here this is the data and if you uh, see the data set so all the like gender you can see i have coded then again socio economic status smoking absent present then again there is a cardiovascular disease status which is present absent mi order which is in the form of a recurrent order and the first order so all these are the categorical data and then this weight height this is the continuous data so this was regarding the import and giving the name to the variable now the third action which i need to do that is the compute variable so how to do the computation of variable uh, that we will see here so if you need to do the uh, like bmi we calculate it for the formula is weight divided by height in meter square so if you have to compute that what you can do you can go to this this data has this option you can see there are many options here uh, this is the transform button this is the compute button so you should click this compute so if you click this compute i want to compute the bmi so i will write the bmi then what this here you can show the uh, description like this is the body mass index and this is the function option so if you click this it will show you the various functions so the various functions you can see here that there is a function of statistics these are the various functions you can scroll down and you can see these functions and this is the variable so right now i have to put the formula so for that i'll put weight so weight is like this is the weight in kg but if you see the height it is in meter square so i will with my uh, this thing i will press this oblique because this is the divided by uh, button and then you have to put that in the bracket the other formula which you are putting in the denominator so in denominator suppose if you want like height in meter square so i will click height here then again i will uh, multiply this with height because it is the height in meter square so you have to click this height twice because this is a multiplication square and again you need to multiply this it with 0.001 because this is the meter it is in meter so by multiplying this because there are two squares so you are basically uh, giving the formula of weight in kg divided by height in meter square and then if you press okay you can see here there is a bmi so if you again if you press this this view will hide and this is the view so you can see this is the bmi this has been calculated up till three decimal value so this is the bmi now you want to make the categories of the bmi because bmi you know that we classify bmi based on the okay, we make the categories like whether it is in overweight category obese category or the normal category so for that we use the option of transform so you click this option of transform and then you can keep this uh, name as a bmi cat so i have just changed the name as a bmi cat and again you have to use the source variable here you will use create new transform maybe so i will write create new transform and this it will ask you to recode it because you have to give the command so click on this add and then it is asking for source so if the source is if the source of this is if the bmi we can write that if the bmi is more than or less than so if you click this there is a icon here 
So if you click this, you can see here the more than and greater than. So you can write here, like if it is more than 25, then it will be obese, obese. So I may write it as a obese. So I'm using the Asian standards and you have to write this obese in a inverted comma, in the single inverted comma. So write this as obese and then again, you have to come down. The second criteria you can write if it is less than. So if it is less than, again, you need to write this press option of recode condition. And similarly, you can choose the option of less than. So if it is less than 18.5, then it will be the underweight. So you can write here less than 18.5 and it will be underweight. And then you have to use again yeah, the, here the inverted comma. So I will write underweight here. And then I will have, I have kept it in the single inverted comma. So this is how you can put the category. So since I have already done it, so I'm not using this. So this was the BMI cat. Now if, so this four uh, commands, we have seen how to, open the file, how to label variable, how to compute variable and how to transform variable. Now I will show you how to perform the descriptive statistics. So for descriptive statistics, there are four uh, think, uh, variables here, age, gender, BMI and smoking status. So there is a question for you. All of you are expected to uh, please uh, type in the chat box. Uh, we, you will make frequency table for which variable? So there are five options. So please write in the chat box. So, okay. We'll see uh, that answer would be that you can do it for all because all are a categorical, except for age. Age is not clear here whether, whether it is a categorical or not. So you can do that for all the variables, which is categorical in nature. So now we'll see how to perform the frequency. So go to this analysis. In the analysis, there is an option of exploration. So click on this exploration. And in this, you can see there is an option of descriptive. So click on this descriptive. And here you can see this mean median is automatically clicked. So if it is a frequency table, you don't want a mean and median. So click this statistics and uncheck this mean and median because this for frequency table, you don't want any of these. So uncheck all these options. And then again, if you want it for like gender, so move these category of gender, socioeconomic status for which you want to calculate the frequency table here. And then you click on this frequency table. So if you click this, you can see that there is a frequency of gender, smoking. So all these frequency table is appearing here. So you can see in the same view, you have the data with you and you have the output also. And the screen is very dynamic. Like if you move this back here, then this will be, this will disappear from the output window. If you add some more variable here, you can see there is an appearance of more variable. So that's the beauty of the Jamovi. And if you want to import or save, then you can do it right click and you can copy it and save it. So you can copy this table or you can copy all analysis. There's an option of all also. So it depends what all you need to copy, but keep on copy, copying and pasting it in the your Word document, if the result which you want to save. Then this is the frequency table. If you want to calculate the mean and median, the descriptives of the continuous variable, then what you should do. So what I'll do, I'll move these variable back to this window. And then we can see, we will choose the like continuous variable, like age. We can choose if you, we go down. You can have the systolic blood pressure because SBP is a systolic blood pressure, then diastolic blood pressure, then you have a cholesterol. So for uh, then you may take the LDH, LDH. So all these continuous variables are there. And then you have this mean and median. So you click on this mean. If you want median, there is a median also. 
if there is no missing data you can uncheck this because then this this missing column will be not be there if you want the standard deviation you can click the standard deviation for median if you want this uh, interquartile range you can click this interquartile range and this is the test for normality. So if you want to see whether your variable are normally distributed or not. So we know about the shapiro wilk test that if the sample size is less than 50, then you should use the shapiro wilk test. And if it is more, then you should use the plot. So if you click on this plot, keep on coming down. And you can see here there are various options. There is a histogram, density, box plot, violin, bar plot. So basically, we do the box plot for the outliers, and we do the histogram and density plot to see the normality and QQ plot also. But we know that many times we do we prefer QQ plot. So in that, you, there you can see that there is appearance of QQ plot and box plot for all the continuous variable which you have entered as a descriptive. So it is taking some time. And then you will see that after some time, there will be appearance of box plot. So this is the box plot. You can see that there is no outlier. Then you can, this is the QQ plot. And then you can see this is again a box plot, QQ plot. So you can see these variables. Here you can see there is a one outlier here. In this case, in diastolic blood pressure, there is a one outlier because this dot will be in the form of an outlier. And again, then this is about the normality. So these options are there where you can check the normality. You can check the skewness, kurtosis also. So depending on your need, you can uh, do all these analysis in, of the descriptive statistics. So now next, we will uh, see what is the next question. Then uh, the next question would be, So this I have shown you regarding the frequency. So this is the dummy table for this gender-wise distribution, which we have seen the count and percentage, the frequency table. And similarly, uh, now we have seen this normality, mean, median, and interquartile range. And we know about mean and median that if the data is normally distributed, you need to report the mean along with standard deviation. But if the data is skewed, you need to report median with interquartile range. Then uh, you have to check for the normality that we have seen overall calculation of mean, median, and mode, and then you have to report it. So this is the dummy table for all these sociodemographic, anthropometric, and clinical and biochemical parameter, depending on your data skewness of your data. So you will report mean or median along with standard deviation or the interquartile range. Now uh, we will see how to perform a chi-square test of association and chi-square test of homogeneity. So for that, the research question, which I have to see, this is, a, this is a question for you, that if you want to see the relationship between the smoking and cardiovascular disease status, there is a one association of this type. And the second, then again, uh, chi-square. So which of the, uh, with this question, that chi-square test of association will be used for, which of the three options are correct? So first one is to show the relationship between the smoking and CVD status. Then second is to show the relationship between the BMI score and cholesterol. And third is both. So please write answer in the chat box. And the correct answer would be the first one, because the second one is the relationship between the BMI score, both of uh, and cholesterol and BMI score is a continuous variable. So we will use bivariate correlation or the Pearson's correlation to see that. And in the first one, if the data is categorical in nature, then we use for association the chi-square test. So we will see how to use the uh, Jamovi. So in this case, this is the data set. Again, I'll go to the analysis. So for chi-square, you have to use the option of this frequency. So click on this option of frequency, and you can see here independent sample. So this is the chi-square test of association. Click this, again, this uh, interface will appear. So you, the question is that you have to see the association between the uh, chi-square test. Let me see the question. So the question was, I have to see the association between the smoking status and cardiovascular disease uh, status. So for that, This is the row and column. So you uh, association between the cardiovascular disease status, you can move this to column and the smoking to the row and then they come to the statistics. So in the statistics, you, you can see the chi-square. So it is automatically clicked. If you, if you want to see the odds ratio between these two, because uh, th maybe if it is a cross-sectional study, then also many a times we report odds ratio. So if you click on this odds ratio, this it will give you an odds ratio here. And then you go down. 
and then you can see here phi and Kramer v. So if you want to uh, convey about the strength of association, then click on this for phi and Kramer v value. In this cells, you want a percentage and the percentage if you want that uh, you want a row wise percentage, you can click for the row wise percentage and plot if you want to have any plot. But since we don't have want uh, any plot in this case, because uh, we don't test for normality. Normality basically chi-square is a non-parametric test. So I'm not checking for normality. So this is the value of chi-square. You can see it is less than, uh, it is significant because it is less than 1001. And these are the uh, two by two table contingency table for the presence and absence of cardiovascular disease versus smoking status. And this is the value of phi and Kramer V. So this is how we perform the chi-square test of association. Now the another question is the phi, if you want to do the chi-square test of homogeneity. So chi-square test of homogeneity is done. This will be the, this. Uh, so again, before I show you the chi-square test of homogeneity, let's enter these, uh, see the, how to enter the result. So this is the association between the smoking and cardiovascular disease status. And you can see this is the status and this is the, uh, smoking status and this is the cardiovascular disease status. So all that which you have seen the uh, two by two contingency table with number and percentage you should enter here. You should in the bottom uh, note you should write the value of chi-square, the degree of freedom and the p-value and then you should write the interpretation. And if you wish to write the odds ratio then the odds ratio which we calculate through two by two contingency table that is that is a crude odds, odds ratio because adjusted odds ratio we calculate in the logistic regression. So here you, uh, if you wish to calculate and report crude odds ratio between the two uh, categorical variable, then you can have a separate column for that here only and then you can write that. Now the next is the chi-square test of homogeneity and the research question is whether if I want to check whether the proportion of outcome, so the outcome in my case is the death or the a person is alive at the end of maybe one year. So if I want to see the outcome across gender, then I will again use the chi-square test of homogeneity. So for that, again, you can see in the row and column, I'll move these back. So I'll enter this gender and this outcome is at the last. So this outcome I have entered here. And for homogeneity, this is the option, Z test for the difference in two proportion. So you should click that Z test of difference in two proportion, and this will give you the value. So this is again significant. And if you see the proportion, you can see here that the death that is, uh, if you see the female and male, so death is more in case of female as compared to male. 27.3% uh, versus 42.2%. So this is how you will do the test of chi-square test of homogeneity. You only have to change this option from chi-square to test of difference in Z test of difference in two proportion. So now we'll see, this is the uh, dummy table for the chi-square uh, test of two proportion. So this is the gender, female and male. And this is the status alive or dead at the end of one year. And in the bottom, you have to write the Z test of two proportion that its value, degree of freedom, P value, and then you have to write the interpretation. Now the next we'll see if you want to compare the proportion. So if you want to compare the proportion pre and post across each inter any intervention, or a, if it is a pre post study, then we use the McNemer test. And this is the question for the McNemer test. At the time of discharge, if you assume that the all patients underwent a nutritional counseling session to improve their hemoglobin level, and if you want to see whether this counseling has any, any impact on their hemoglobin, then you use this McNemer test. So for that, again, we'll go to the data set. And in this, you will see there is an option. So you come to this frequency and here you can see there is an option of paired samples. So this, you click this MACNEMA and in this, again, you have to, because it will be a pre and post hemoglobin. So both should be the categorical variable. So this is the pre and this pre means baseline and this is the post. So you can see here and already this option because the value it gives as of in the form of a chi-square. So this is the McNemer test. And in the McNemer test, we see the marginal proportion. So you can see here that uh, the value of chi-square, this is also significant. So we have seen up till now the descriptive statistics, 
the uh, contingency table two by two, that is for the chi-square test of homogeneity. We have seen the chi-square test of association and we have seen about the McNamara test. And this is the uh, dummy table for the McNamara te test. So this is the post-counseling anemia status. This is the pre-counseling anemia status. And then this is the chi-square value, degree of freedom, p-value. And then you have to write the interpretation uh, the way we write it for the McNamara. Now the next, if you want to compare two means or two median uh, in the two groups or in the same group, if you have took this these measurement twice. So for that, again, if if uh, the question, the research question. So before I go to the research question, in the uh, case of testing of the two means or two median, there are a few assumptions. So you, you should always check for the normality, whether the data is normally distributed or not, or the homogeneity of variance, because the homogeneity of variance will test whether the population which has been withdrawn, the sample which you have withdrawn from the population, whether they are having the same variance or not. So we will test for the age, BMI, cholesterol, all continuous variable. And then we compare these values across. We have to check for the MI order. So MI order we have categorized as the first order and the recurrent order. So if you go to this uh, option also, you can, there's a, you can see there is an option of this t-test. So click on this t-test and then there is an option of independent sample t-test. So independent sample t-test, if my grouping variable is uh, order of MI, so this is my grouping variable, you can see the sign here. So this flower sign and this bar sign shows that this is a nominal variable and this is an ordinal variable. So your grouping variable should be nominal or ordinal and your dependent variable should be continuous as seen by this scale variable. So if I, I, if I uh, move these, maybe if I want to check the LDH and age, so I will move this age here, which is my continuous variable. And then again, this diastolic blood pressure, this cholesterol, so maybe I'll, we'll just see these with these three values. And then you can see by default, it is the student t-test, which is the clicked here. But we have read that we sh should go for the normality assumption and to check for any outlier. So for that normality and homogeneity, click on this homogeneity and QQ plot. And then you will see about these three variables. So you can see that this homogeneity of variance, which is the Levine statistics, if it is significant, then we say that the homogeneity of variance is not met. So in case of age, it is not met, whereas in case of systolic blood pressure and cholesterol, it is met. And then you can see the QQ plot. So QQ plot, if the all the individual data point is across this diagonal line, then this QQ plot is normally distributed. So both these so systolic blood pressure, age is normally distributed. This cholesterol is also normally distributed. But if you see this LDH, if I shift this LDH to this place, then you can see that the QQ plot is not deviated. This is the skewed QQ plot. So in case the data is skewed, then you should not use the student t-test. Rather, you should use man Whitney u test which is the non-parametric counterpart of the independent sample t-test. So that's why I'll move this again back here because I will use the student t-test. In that, I want to see that uh, this mean difference. I want to see the descriptives also, the mean, uh, this thing. In homogeneity also, in this case, if the homogeneity of variance assumption is not met, then you should report the Welsh T statistics. So I have clicked this Welsh T statistics also, and then let's focus on the output. So this is the output, and you can see the statistics. You can see the differences. So this is significant. All is significant, but this change in this uh, cholesterol is not significant. And in every case, we will use this value of student t-test except age where we will use Welsh t-test because the homogeneity of variance is not met. And this is the uh, this uh, test. And if you see the descriptive, this is the descriptive. So this is the age mean uh, in the first order and in the recurrent order, the systolic blood pressure was 147 in the first order and the 135 in the recurrent order. So this is how you can see the output of this independent sample t-test and man with new also like in this case if i want to test the ldh and sgot because that those two variables are not normally distributed so i will shift ldh and sgot here and then you can click this man with me because they are not normally distributed and again you can see the 
value th these things so they will report the median but again for interquartile range because in this descriptive they don't report the interquartile range for that you need to go again to the exploration and use this option of descriptive to uh, get their interquartile range and uh, after this this is the dummy table for uh, this mean value of bmi cholesterol age and sbp and you can see this is the first and a recurrent order mi along with standard deviation you have to enter the result and the write the interpretation and one point which we have already made it clear that if the homogeneity of variance assumption is not met then you should use the welsh t statistics rather than student t statistics and this is the ldh and sgot where you will see the median and interquartile range and man whitney u value because this test is non parametric counterpart of the independent sample t test and in this case because the qq plot was showing that it is not normally distributed that's why we will use this man whitney u test now the next we will see the paired t test so if you have to compare the paired mean or paired medians then you should use the paired t test and the question is maybe at the time of discharge all the patients they underwent a nutritional counseling and uh, you have a pre uh, counseling hemoglobin level and a post counseling hemoglobin level and if you want to see whether there is a change so this is again an example of pre and post test so again it is very much similar to macnemer but macnemer we test the proportion here we test the mean value and uh, for that again we will go to the data set so you have to check for the a uh, paired t test so this t test will show you the paired sample t test so this you can see uh, if you click this option this paired sample t test you can see click this and this paired value will be there so paired value value will be the hemoglobin level so you have to move these two pair of pre and post here you want the mean difference you want the t value but again you can see option of wilcox and rand so if you uh, before you check for that you again uh, check for the qq plot because that uh, assumption checking is important so since qq plot the qq plot is plotted between the difference of baseline and post and in spss if you can recall we need to we need to create a new variable of this difference whereas jamo we it automatically creates this difference and you have a qq plot which is showing that it is normally distributed so this is uh, the uh, paired sample t test and then you can click on this descriptive also where you can see the mean and uh, median and standard deviation of this baseline hemoglobin this is the difference so the difference is uh, in this case mean difference was 0.693 and uh, it was significant so result if you have to enter the result then you have to uh, the dummy table will be like this there will be pre intervention and the post intervention mean hemoglobin level and its standard deviation then you have to write on the footnote the t value the degree of freedom p value and its interpretation now so we have seen till now we have seen how to import the data how to compute variable how to transform variable then we saw how we performed the descriptive analysis how we did the chi square test of association chi square test of homogeneity uh, and then we have done the tested the mean and median across two groups so we uh, have done the independent sample t test we saw the man with new that is the uh, non parametric counterpart we saw the pair t test and wilcox and sign rank test which is the non parametric of the pair t test now if you want to test the difference uh, in uh, in more than two groups mean difference in more than two groups then we use the anova so the question is like if you want to see the so the question is if you want to test the mean systolic blood pressure across bmi category so bmi category is got three categories low that that was the normal overweight and obese so we will see how to perform the anova so for that you go uh, again to the uh, jamov there is a option of anova so in the upper ribbon you can see that all the analysis is there so this was exploration was for the descriptive t test was a independent sample t test and the paired t test this anova so click on this anova and right now there are many options of this anova there is a one way anova repeated measure ancova and mancova but right now and it's non parametric also like kruskal valis and friedman but i am only showing you demonstrating you anova for more detail of these uh, jamovi option you can visit our website merit india where you can find the videos related to these presentations so i will click on this one way anova and i have to test it across the bmi cat so this bmi cat 
if you see the bmi cat then it it is the categorical variable and this uh, is the systolic blood pressure so in the dependent variable i'll move this sbp so this is the depend independent variable is the grouping variable is the bmi cat and you have to see both the things so here also you check for the assumptions so you check for the homogeneity test you see the value of homogeneity and then you see if this if the p value is less than 0 0.05 then this assumption is not met so here we want p value to be more than 0 0.05 so this is more than 0 0.05 that's why the assumption of homogeneity is met so we will use this fisher uh, t, uh, fisher f value we will not use this welsh and then if you want to check for the normality so for normality ideally we check for the shapiro welkel but since the sample size is more than 50 so i will use the qq plot so this QQ plot you can see here, and this is it is across this diagonal line. So this is normally distributed. So I will use this ANOVA non its non non parametric counterpart. You can have a descriptive table where there you will have a difference of mean. You can see that the mean uh, SBP is one forty. Uh, the OBs almost it is same, and here it is a standard uh, deviation. And this ANOVA value you can see here that this is the significant. So this is how we perform the. Uh, one way ANOVA and if you have to enter the result of one way ANOVA so this uh, on the vertical column you have to write the categories of the uh, categorical variable and in here you have to write mean and standard deviation and in the bottom footnote you have to write the Levine statistics value because this will show whether your uh, data has assumed the equality of variance or not this is the value of f statistics and then this is the degree of freedom and its p value. So we have seen how to perform the one way ANOVA. If you have to do the correlation. So correlation, we have seen that when the two variables are continuous in nature, then we variate the do the bivariate correlation. So we will see first how to do the correlation between two variables, and then we'll see if we've got more than two variables, so how to make a correlation matrix. So the question is, we have to measure the correlation between the cholesterol and BMI. And then we'll see if we keep on adding more variables to so the age, BMI, cholesterol, and SBP how it is made. So again, for before we apply this uh, correlation for everything, we have to check for the assumption. So for correlation, click on this regression. You can see there is an option of correlation matrix. So this in this correlation matrix, if you click right now, I'm only moving two variables. So maybe I'll move the uh, the SBP and cholesterol. So this is the SBP and cholesterol right now i'm only checking with the two variables here automatically click is the pearson pearson correlation we do when the data is normally distributed so you can check with the correlation matrix if you check for the correlation matrix you can see there is an appearance of scatter plot so the scatter plot shows that this is the uh, straight line and this is linear uh, linearity is there and for uh, we have already seen that this is normally distributed so we'll apply the pearson's correlation if the data is not normally distributed then you will use the spearman rank correlation in you can see the value of correlation if you click this then you it will show the significant uh, it will flag the significant p value and you can see that here the p value is not significant because its value is 0 0.52 and if you have to make the uh, correlation matrix, then you move uh, another uh, variable, like you can move the uh, uh, this thing and you can also move the age. So this I have moved and this, uh, that's you, how you can see that there is the appearance of this is the correlation matrix. And in the down also you can see there is the appearance of various scatter plot between the variables. So you can see this is between the age and up if you come up, this is between the age and DBP. This, Scatter plot is between the cholesterol and SBP. These two, this is between the diastolic blood pressure and cholesterol. This scatter plot is between this. So you have to say that you have to take one variable from this row and one from the column, and the respective scatter plot will show you the linearity. So they are linearly uh, related, and uh, we, we know that they are normally distributed. So we are using the Pearson's correlation, and this is the correlation matrix which you can see here. And the direction, if you can see the value of these, so it will show you the uh, whether it is positively correlated or a negatively correlated. So this was regarding the correlation matrix and the correlation uh, between the two variables. 
this is the correlation table you can see that there is a uh, we we will report the coefficient of determination also that was there in that uh, r square we'll see how uh, what was there so you can see this output and you can see uh, if you go up So that's how. Now the next question is, if you if you see the next question, it is the binomial logistic regression. So if you have to perform logistic regression, the question uh, which I have to show that is I have to develop a predictive model for outcome of death using age, gender, and smoking status. So before that, uh, you have to run the assumptions. I'm not checking each and every assumption. There are a lot of assumptions for this binomial correlation. So for that, you go to this regression. In this regression, you, you can see there is a two outcome. This is the binomial regression. And uh, here, the dependent variable is the outcome. So the, it should be categorical. So dependent variable is the outcome variable. Uh, this and then there are two windows. This is covariate. So you can see the sign here. This is a sign of scale variable. So under the covariate, you should enter the continuous variable. So age was my continuous variable. So I will enter age here. And then factor should be the categorical variable. So the factors are the gender and smoking status. So I will move gender here to the factor and smoking status also to the factor. And then you can see there is an option of model builder. So in that model builder already, you can see that this is the estimate, this is the standard error, this is the Z value, and this is the P values. And if you go down here, then we will keep on checking. So if you see the reference level, it will show you the reference level also. So this is giving the, ref, uh, the reference level is alive here because it is telling the odds ratio in the diet patients, the, the reference for gender is male. So it will tell you the odds ratio in female as compared to male. Similarly, the reference level of smoking is the uh, non-smoker. So it will tell you the odds ratio in smoker as compared to non-smoker. This is the option for uh, assumption check. So this is the collinearity statistics. So this, this VIF and uh, tolerance value, it tells you regarding the collinearity, all the independent variable, it should not be uh, linearly very highly correlated. So the VIF value should be ideally should be less than three, uh, but it, even if it is less than 10, that is okay. And this tolerance is uh, opposite of this VIF. So this is one of the assumption check of the logistic regression. This is the model fit. So this uh, uh, Mac Fitton R square, you can click this Nagelkar R square also, because this tells you the R square value in the population. And then you can check this overall model fit also. So the value of F test statistics give you the overall model fit. And here you can click on this odds ratio and it's 95% confidence interval, which uh, will be added in this uh, table itself. So this is the odds ratio of a, uh, and uh, this age, this is the female to male, and this is from smoker and non-smoker. So you can say the significance, if you see the significant, this smoker and non-smoker, this is borderline significant, this gender is significant and age is also significant. So you can say that the with increase in uh, one year of age, the odds will increase by, uh, this is, will be uh, increased by one. Similarly, with uh, change in the gender, like if the reference is uh, male, then female will be three times uh, the mortality or the outcome will be more in females. So similarly, you have to write the interpretation. And then this is about the prediction. So uh, this, uh, if you want to have a, a, a area under the curve and the sensitivity and specificity of your model, at cutoff point 0.5. So then you can have this ROC curve also here. So uh, it will take some time. This is the ROC curve of your model. And this is the area under the curve. So if the area under the curve, it is 8.54. So it is a poor, it, it has got a good discrimination capacity. And this is the sensitivity. So this is the uh, this uh, accuracy of the model. So this is how you check for the logistic regression. So now we'll see one example of the multiple linear regression. So this is the table. You can see this is the out dummy table for the 
binomial logistic regressions where you have got a variable this is the value of b that, that is the uh, constant this is the significant level crude sorts ratio this crude sorts ratio here uh, you you can get here also and this is the adjusted when you have more variable then you have adjusted odds ratio and then the next question is the about the linear regression so multiple linear regression the question which is which i have to show that is the i have to develop a predictive model to estimate cholesterol level so cholesterol here is a continuous variable using age gender and smoking status again go back to jamovi and in the regression only choose the option of this linear regression if you click on this linear regression so dependent variable will be cholesterol here so i'll move this cholesterol here which is a continuous in nature and this will be the same so the age i will move in the uh, covariate and gender and smoking status i will move as a factor because they are the categorical on the nominal similarly you keep on checking the options so this is the model builder this you have already you have checked it reference level you can see the reference so this is male is reference for uh, uh, this uh, it will tell you the uh, value in female as compared to male similarly this is the non smoker reference value and then you if you go down you can see the other options so this is the assumptions check so we also check a lot of assumptions so this cook distance auto correlation uh, normality qq plot residual plot so all these uh, for the theory part you can go back to our website that is the meritindia.org and then you can see there is a lecture on these assumptions checks also and then you can learn and this is regarding the model fit so this is overall r square and r and if you have want to know overall model fit that you can click on this f statistics and in the model coefficient because you want the standardized estimate so this is important and uh, you want confidence interval also so uh, that you can get here in this table and then uh, this is how you uh, do the analysis uh, in the jamovi so uh, this is the table for the jamovi dummy table for this uh, multiple linear regression where you report the value of b and the 95% confidence interval t and p value so uh, this was the uh, overall overview of this uh, jamovi how we can use it and you must have seen the dynamic status of the uh, jamovi and its interface and in single interface it gives you all the options and you don't have to keep on changing or switching the overview so that's the most advantageous part and the graphs they come beautifully you can directly copy and paste it in your manuscript you can report it you can check all the assumptions and you can mention about all those assumptions so this is very very easy interface for all the beginners and for all the clinicians non clinicians all the researcher so we definitely definitely recommend uh, this software so this is the upcoming event uh, in the march 8th march which is the sample size we already conducted two event on this sample size for the cross sectional study and for the case control now third is for the cohort and then for other activity which uh, is upcoming do visit our website meritindia.org with this note i would like to thank all the participant and i would like to thank my hod dr cm singh and venkatesh and all the residents and clarnet to our digital media partner thank you so much Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for the wonderful session. Hope all our participants will have benefited largely from this session. Now, I would like to request the man behind RFMC, Merit India, and who does all the work in the background to increase the reputation of the department nationwide. Dr. Shamshad Ahmed, sir, Assistant Professor of our department, I request, sir, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Venkatesh. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Venkatesh, for the introduction, and it's. your effort also because you are associated with the care net from last 3 uh, to 4 months uh, first of all i would like to thank dr pragya uh, for conducting this session so nicely and from last i think one and a half years he is conducting too many sessions on spss jamovi qualitative research and the team merit india uh, that stands for medical education and research innovation team express their thanks to all the participants for their valuable time and effort for joining this workshop uh, we are constantly working to reduce the stress related to data related analysis and um, uh, medical education related matters 
And for this, we have a website. We develop too many contents. We are uploading the contents to the website, to the YouTube channels. And these all contents are free of cost. And they are freely available without any copyright issue. From participants, we only want that they can use this content with PPT videos. They just uh, acknowledge the Merit India uh, in uh, wherever and whenever they are using this. So again, uh, with this, we are finishing this workshop. Thanks for participation and stay connected with us. Thank you, Venkatesh. Thanks a lot, sir. So, so now we have come to the end of the session. E-certificates for this session will be mailed to all the participants within a week's time. If you're interested to know more about our future sessions, you can always visit our website or you can check out the department Facebook page, Department of Community and Family Medicine, Ames Patna. Hope to see you all in the next session. Thank you. We are closing now. Thank you so much, everyone. Sir, uh, sh can I conclude the session here now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you.